What's going on everybody? Chrissy the Slasher Dude back with a, another video today. If you can uh, want to follow, want to slash the like, you want to, you know, sleeping bag kill the subscribe, I am on here on YouTube on Chrissy the Slasher Dude. I am on Instagram, all one word Chrissy the Slasher Dude 1979. And then I'm on uh, Letterbox Chrissy the Slasher Dude or just probably Chrissy. And then I'm also on uh, Twitter Chrissy the Slasher Dude. Uh, Twitter's a toilet anyway. I just usually just uh, do quick links to if I'm doing any videos and and then um yeah we'll just uh just get started here um today just a quick video here um I've been thinking about this for a while um just my um my journey into uh the genre uh, uh genre of uh giallos in general um I've been into giallos for a few years. Um, it may seem here since I created this channel, it's been a couple of years. Um, just huge shout outs to uh, Dirk, Subjected Perspective Collective, and um, his buddy Darren, um, my Jalo chap down there in Europe, UK area. Um, awesome dudes, they know their Jalos in and out. It's very cool listening to their Hour to Kill, watching their Hour to Kill. I've been on a uh, couple of them. Um, first one was, um, got me on there with... Um, slashers with the uh, giallo elements um since uh this is one of my favorite genres of of film in general i'm not gonna say it's horror I'm not gonna say it's slasher it's thriller it's a mix of everything just doing a quick synopsis here of uh kind of how i started this journey and why i love uh, the giallo uh, genre so much um really it started with this guy right here which you can probably get off of amazon um it's the uh teenage uh the Teenage Slasher Movie Book by uh, J.A. Uh, Kurswell and stuff like that. Um, I first got introduced to this by uh, Gabby Sanchez, a.k.a. Gabby Zombie. She has the first edition of this book. It was called Something Different. And um, I have to kind of finish this reading this and stuff like that, but it's a good read. It has great stuff in here, great pictures and stuff like that too. So um, I'll just do a quick synopsis here of really just getting introduced to this genre, just going through and stuff like that. It starts on page 44, um, properly titled as uh, Death Stalks on High Heels, the Italian Giallo. And then I was just kind of hooked in general because it's because of, you know, I'll just use this right here as an excuse, um, Giallo Essentials. But like I say, it's Giallo, which means yellow in Italian. Um, so uh, just a quick uh, expert from, uh, from this book. Uh, the Giallo takes its name from a series of lurid thrillers with trademark yellow covers. Giallo means yellow in Italian, which first appeared in Italy in 1929. Typically Latin in nature, the Giallo took the, the staid crime novel and spiced it up with a dose of sex, glamour, and violence, and great soundtracks. And really, I can say, I'm not going to say what my favorite giallo is. That is a stream for another time, probably in the next year or so. There's a ton of this genre I still need to watch. I love it so much. You know, wherever you get, it's very good. I've always said these Italian directors are different types of people. There's awesome filmmaking, the way they do it. It goes all the way back to Sergio Leone with the westerns that he did, specifically The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. You have a few other ones, I believe, in Clint Eastwood's filmography. He was just good. He was different. A lot of Italian directors took off of that film style, I believe, and it just, it just, just gorgeous, just really beautiful, great filmmaking in general. Not saying the colors or any of that stuff, but just a different type of filmmaking that's really good. You see it with Jalos. You see the, the the centering of the eyes, right? The camera goes in. You see the eyes. There's something awesome, sexy about that, where it shows it from both perspectives of the person or the other person they're talking to. You see them talking, and then the eyes are blinking or just looking around. It's awesome stuff. A quick shout out here to a channel called In Search of the Shadows introduced me to this film right here, which is my favorite Fulci film, which is which is The Beyond. Um, it's it's not giallo; it's Italian horror, but it has giallo elements in it. You have the, the late great Lucio Fulci with his 
you know, his great filmography of the stuff that he's directed and his directing style, the people that he had around him, his producers, everybody, the music that he had. Same thing, you have this gothic atmosphere. Jalo, to me, if you put this in stuff like this, is it's a slow kind of nice, dreadful pace, right? You have the the staring, you have the eyes, you have the centering on the eyes. I really like that stuff. It's a slow burn type of a kill type of a thing. There's something sexy about that in this genre. So that's just a quick shout out to this uh, to this film right here. This is a masterpiece to me. I love it. Uh, I can't give it a 10 out of 10. If I could, I would, but no, it's definitely a good, great 9 out of 10. You've heard this all before about this awesome film right here. But um, really, and then... Another one, really, it introduced me. I'll introduce it first. For I'll take it to that page here of this awesome book here. When it had an article on here, in the passage in the book, The Darkness of Dario Argento, you know, it has pictures of the bird with crystal plumage, of course, but it introduced me to this film right here, which is Deep Red. Um, this scene right here, we all know what that is. I'm like going, what's up with that? I've, I've had Amazon Prime since the early 2000s. I've had it forever. It happened to have it on there. You know, I got the the Blu-ray from Arrow. Then I got this bad boy right here, which is a great transfer of Deep Red. My... I believe, yes, this is number one. I believe it is. Um... Sorry, I sometimes kind of forget a lot of stuff, but yeah. This to me was the last great Jalo ever done during that time. I don't think nothing... There's been good stuff that comes after it, but nothing that matches this right here. This is a crowning achievement by the great Dario Argento. But it introduced me to this film. It introduced me to, you can take a slasher and then you can turn it up on his head. And you can make it... Make it sexy. Make it violent. Make it... Make the colors kind of stand out. Make the acting stand out. Make it to where you like these characters. That's why I like about Jalo specifically in the slasher genre when they do it correctly like this. It makes you kind of feel for the characters. It makes you w wanting to know what's going on. It makes you want to know what the killer is. One of the greatest reveals of a killer in, in really film history in my opinion. Um, but yeah, introduced me to awesome films like this. And then, of course, you know, and you have awesome kind of ones. Like, say, New York Ripper, it talks about it talks about a lot of the stuff, the co-ed murders, um, which I may need to check out. Darren may know stuff about that as well. Dirk probably, too. Um, awesome stuff like Torso by the great uh, Sergio Martino, watching that for the first time, getting into his filmography as part of this set right here. I mean, great just slashers, and there's something awesome and sexy about them, about them and stuff like that. You know, and it can be the same thing with the genre, too. You get a lot of giallos, probably about maybe three quarters of them are are, are good to sort of like so-so. But then you get that quarter that just hits that sweet spot. And, you know, Torso is one of them and stuff like that. This is a good set. If you kind of want to get into the genre, I highly suggest looking out. But this set in particular from Arrow when they do their giallo essentials, you know, if you kind of want to get into that genre, that's another way of doing it and stuff like that. But, you know, great stuff. They mentioned Torso right here. You know, so like great stuff right there. So, yeah, very good. So, you know, when it's good, it's good. And like I said, you just have these awesome awesome kind of stuffs like that and turn it to the one page I was supposed to be at but then I kind of went across from it but then of course you know I saw this one on Prime initially and I had to have got it and I love it for what it is of course that's the original poster here for Blood and Black Lace and stuff like that talks about that a little bit you know the Jalo in increasingly mixed the horror and thriller genres to great effect. I totally agree. Uh, there's another book that I've got too that I need to read through too that I got off of suggestions from Darren and stuff like that too. Great stuff. But yeah, if you can pick out, pick out, find this book, I would highly recommend it as a slasher fan and stuff like that. This is very good. It has great knowledge in it and I love it to death. And I, I just need to read the rest of it through and stuff like that because it talks about all genre of slashers. So highly impressive. But yeah, and it introduced me to it. So I have the... Uh, I should have got the Arrow Blu-ray when it came out, but that sold out pretty quickly. But I got this uh, this one from MVD. 
And that's the original poster art, of course, Blood and Black Lace. This film is practically a masterpiece. Um, I love Blood, Blood and Black Lace. Uh, the colors are beautiful. Literally, the movie starts out, it looks like it's a soap opera with actors. They look like mannequins. Um, it's one of the greatest opening scenes I've ever seen, and I'm 44 years old, you know. This was done way before I was born, um, like a good decade before I was born. This is good. This changed filmmaking for me. Um, Ian had to um, with a lot of stuff. This is just just awesome. No matter what time period you're in, you can watch this and be impressed with it. Yeah, and introduced me to this bad boy, Blunt Black Lace. Love it. Love it to death. And of course, this um, this awesome release that Arrow just released. Right now, this is my uh, my release of the year. You know, I have box sets and stuff like that, too. Right now, it's the Psycho box set that Arrow released. And then it's this this one's the release of the year. I mean, look at that cover. It's so awesome. But it's kind of this gateway to the Jalo genre, if you're interested. Really, just the pretty posters and just the pretty art. And just look at that. It's just like, it just screams like something you kind of want to watch. And it just, um, this love, I, you know, just piques my interest. And um, I just, um, I really... Really love it and love it a lot. Anyway, um, thanks to whoever's watching this. Just uh, just a quick video here, eh, 11 minutes, not too bad, of my journey into this um, awesome uh, genre, which is uh, Jalo. Um, if you could, uh, uh, mask killer, gloves, slash the like, um, throw them through the window, subscribe. And um, I am Chrissy the Slasher Dude, and I will see you all next time.